Hi, it's Dwyer, DwyerCrime.blog. Also, RichardDwyer.com. Today is August the 31st, 2020. Let's talk about a case that's being tried right now in Australia. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now it is around 10 p.m., a little after 10 p.m., on September the 30th, 2016. Neighbors have found a mother of three, 26-year-old Carolyn Nielsen, outside of her home. She has packing tape around her head. Her hands and feet are bound with speaker wire. She is crying, saying, my kids, my kids. But something was not right. One of the women who found her, Laura Lee Shanahan, leant over her. And according to Ms. Shanahan, Nielsen's hair was clean. An EMT who showed up, Elise Faulkner, found her hair to be staticky, consistent with having been blow dried. She was also wearing what Ms. Shanahan described as a very delicate cotton jumper. The clothing didn't have any damage. There was no deterioration. There was no wear and tear. Miss Nielsen didn't have any visible injuries. She also had a story to tell when the cops arrived. Now, let me say, the cops arrive, here's this woman, she's outside of her home, she is bound, she is crying, the first responders, the neighbors don't notice any kind of injury, any kind of wear, on, wear and tear on her clothes. So then she starts to talk about her 57-year-old mother-in-law who's still in the house. Miss Nielsen claims that her mother-in-law came home from work. That she, Miss Nielsen, was in the kitchen behind the closed door, but she could hear her mother-in-law arguing for 20 minutes with what sounded like two to three men. Ms. Nielsen told the police she eventually came to believe it was a home invasion. Given the tone of the voice, given the commotion. So, she hears the men going through the house. They find her. They bind and gag her and move her outside after hitting her on the back of the head. Now, Miss Nielsen's three children are ages one, three, and five. The police go inside the house. They're concerned, right? They've heard about four people, the 57-year-old mother-in-law and the three kids. They go inside the house. They find the three kids. They're safe. But they also find the murdered, bludgeoned body, dead body, of Miss Nielsen's 57 year old mother in law, Myrna, in the home's laundry room. Myrna was violently beaten to death. Now it's from this point that Carolyn. 
Nielsen's story starts to fall apart. There are things she overlooked that the police were able to use to figure out that her story was fictitious. Well, first, the victim, Myrna Nielsen, is wearing an Apple Watch, which, coupled with the Bluetooth data from Myrna's car and her phone, show that Miss Nielsen's version of events doesn't sync with the digital data on the watch, on the cell phone, and on the car's Bluetooth system. First, the car. The victim, Myrna, had her phone connected by Bluetooth to her car. We know when she returned home from work because the car's Bluetooth connection to her phone got disconnected as she left the car to enter the house. We know that that happened at roughly 6.37 p.m. Right? 6.37 p.m. 47 seconds later. Again, 47 seconds later, starting at 6.38 p.m., Myrna's Apple Watch shows a burst, a flurry of very heavy heart activity. Understand, the Apple Watch was monitoring her heart. Now this burst of heavy activity, which consists of 65 movements in one 39 second stretch, lasts in total about three minutes from 6.38 to 6.41 p.m. when Myrna's heart stops beating. Now the termination of the car Bluetooth phone connection coupled with the heart activity on Myrna's Apple Watch establishes that Myrna was attacked, literally bludgeoned to death, as soon as she entered the house. Right again, her last heartbeat takes place, according to the watch, at 6.41 p.m. This shows, in my opinion, and the trial's ongoing, no final judgment has come down yet, but this shows, in my opinion, that Carolyn Nielsen is lying. There was no 20-minute argument with two to three men, as she claimed. That's a lie. Her mother-in-law leaves the car, enters the house, makes it to the laundry room, is bludgeoned to death, and the beating starts 47 seconds after her Bluetooth connection to her car is terminated. But there is more. There are text messages, believe it or not, from Carolyn Nielsen to her husband. One is at 6.57 p.m. About 15 minutes 15 minutes after her mother-in-law's heart stops beating, according to the Apple Watch. Right, 15 minutes later, 
she's texting her husband. It's even worse than that. 11 minutes after that, 657 texts. Miss Nielsen at 7.08 p.m. uses an eBay application on her phone to buy bicycle tools for her husband. Right, so there's two texts at 6.57 to her husband, then at 7.08, she's on eBay buying bicycle tools. What there's not are two to three men invading the house. No, in my opinion, and again, I'm a layman, I'm not an expert. I'm just an outsider like many of you who's just watching this case from afar, soaking in news reports. I believe, just spe in, on, based on speculation, nothing more, this is not a statement of fact. I believe that the text messages to her husband and the eBay shopping moments after the violent death of her mother-in-law could be a psychopath. Someone with no empathy, no conscience, carrying on life as usual after bludgeoning her mother-in-law to death. Let's talk about the kids. You have three kids. The one-year-old probably doesn't know what's going on. You also have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. Now, why are the kids quiet? Why are the kids distracted while all of this is going on? Well, tests of their hair would later show that the three-year-old and the five-year-old had been given the sedative tramadol. It's the kind of thing that quiets you down. It's the kind of thing that would knock out a kid. Somehow, tramadol got into Carolyn Nielsen's kids' system. So I believe, after killing her mother-in-law before seven, and again, this is speculation on my part. Carolyn Nielsen then had three hours to stage the crime scene. She had three hours to use fabric softener on the cotton jumper that she was found wearing outside of her house. She had three hours to wrap speaker wire around her legs and around her hands and to plant herself where she'd be found a little after 10 o'clock. Understand the level of narcissism. The EMT who arrived on the scene felt that Carolyn Nielsen's hair rather than look like she'd been hit in the head and in a scuffle with two to three men. Her hair looked like it had been blow-dried. Right? The EMT is Ellen Faulkner. I imagine she's going to be a witness at this trial. Right? You had two different women. The EMT and Miss Shanahan who leans over her when she finds her. And both of them find that Miss Nielsen, whose mother-in-law, Myrna, has been bludgeoned to death. In other words, if they're home invaders. We already know the 20-minute argument thing is a complete lie that's inconsistent with the digital data. But if they're home invaders, these are the kind of killers, literally, who would bludgeon a 57-year-old to death. But yet somehow they decide to tie up Miss 
Nielsen, so they're not framing her. They're tying her up. And, of course, they leave no wounds on her. Not only that, her clothes have no stretch marks. Apparently, whatever tussle they had with her left her looking like her hair had just been blow-dried and left her clothes looking clean and not raggedy. Understand, too, when she tells the story to the cops, it sounds harried. Then you start to realize if mother-in-law has been murdered, if her heart stops beating at 641, then Carolyn Nielsen had more than three hours to stage the scene. Think about it, too. The neighbors find her outside of her house. Why would two to three guys who are doing a home invasion take the risk of carrying her outside the house in a neighborhood where there are enough neighbors around to see her after 10? Why would two to three guys carry her outside the house at, let's say, 9 o'clock or 9.30 when they could be spotted by the neighbors? How come none of the neighbors saw any strange men in the neighborhood? Also, the murder itself is as messy as you could get, right? Bludgeoning someone to death. You can imagine the blood spurting onto the clothing of the assailants who did the crime. Well, we know if it's Carolyn Nielsen, we know she had three hours to clean up. We know she's, you know, around fabric softener at a minimum. Right? Her clothes look fresh to the EMT and to Miss Shanahan who finds her. But understand if it's not her, if it's two to three strangers who have ventured into the house and even though they're in the house with other people, right, you're going to do a home invasion, you show up at the house and there are three young kids with their mother in addition to a 57-year-old who's just come home from work. A lot of home invaders would leave that scene, right? Who wants to invade the home with young kids in it, right? I thought a home invasion is about coming in, taking valuable items, leaving. You don't want to complicate your life by coming in and guess what? Here are witnesses who can identify you who can increase the odds of you being apprehended. And so the story makes no sense. Let's say the two to three guys who are doing the home invasion after killing Myrna and running through the home, you would think they would leave DNA someplace. You would think as they leave, someone would notice a blood trail right out the front door. After all, they're supposed to have bludgeoned this woman. How come there's no blood trail? How come there's no foreign DNA? How come there are no witnesses? How come this story makes no sense? How come it's inconsistent? with the Bluetooth connection data and the Apple Watch data. It's because, in my opinion, the accused here is simply not credible. She's making things up. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I understand this case has the media's attention in Australia. If you've been following this case, if you feel that I have 
given information that isn't supported by the record. If you're part of Miss Nielsen's defense team and you want to clear the air here, maybe present some provocative set of facts that would establish a reasonable defense, not one based on the crazy, inconsistent statements that she gave the police when they arrived at the scene, then please feel free to leave those comments in the comment section of this video. I think she's guilty. I'm relying on the data. I'm in Silicon Valley. I don't think Apple watches would suddenly show a burst of time that's incorrect while also having her phone and the Bluetooth connection to her car somehow also be incorrect but yet correspond to the data on the Apple Watch. That just seems to me to be too much of a reach. Let me also point out too that when someone talks about hearing a 20-minute conversation between her mother-in-law and two to three unknown male voices and the timeline establishes no such 20-minute period of time right mom-in-law's heart stops beating as soon as she enters the house folks she's not there for five minutes much less 20 minutes right if that 20 minute story turns out to be pure fiction i believe you should doubt everything carolyn nielsen has said that's how i see it i look forward to your comments thanks for stopping by